always wanted to know <laughs> where the communication exercises came from. Well, that's quite simple. I learned them in Bombay from, uh, from a lady called Muriel Payne. Muriel Payne was uh, an educationist and she spent much of her life in India. And uh, she was a disciple, well, a friend, let's say, of Krishnamurti. Uh, she was also, and she'd been a nurse earlier in her life, and I believe she nursed Krishnamurti during one of his crises, uh, is what she told me. But um, mainly she was an educationist. She was nearly 70 you know, when I met her, and uh, she'd worked a lot as an educationist in South India. I think for a while she was working in one of Krishnamurti's schools, but mainly in other schools. And she told me that what she'd noticed was um, that uh, the teachers were not in communication with their students mm -hmm. and not in communication among themselves. Mm -hmm. She also noticed that husbands and wives were not in communication. Mm -hmm. But especially she was concerned about teachers and children. Mm -hmm. So uh, she wondered what to do about this and uh, the long and the short of it was that she devised these communication exercises partly on the basis of what she'd understood of Krishnamurti's teachings and partly mm. on the basis of other teachings. Mm. She wasn't a very educated woman. Mm. In fact, some of our friends described her as almost illiterate. But she was huh. very good. Yeah? Huh. She was all very good <laughs> as a teacher of communication. Yeah. So I got to know her through friends of mine in Bombay. and. Uh, it occurred to me it wouldn't be a bad idea to ask her to to hold a course. So I, I organized the, a course for her and uh, persuaded about two dozen of my friends, Indian friends, to attend this. And uh, that was how we learned the communication exercises. She also wrote a book, not a very good book, but uh, a book called Creative Education, a copy of which I do have in the public uh, or the library. She died of cancer a few years later. She mm. wasn't much appreciated during her lifetime, and some of our friends felt that uh, the, the greatest appreciation she received from any of the people she'd been associated with was that which she received from us at the end of this particular course. Mm. But she was a quite impressive personality. Mm. Muriel Payne, P-A-Y-N-E. Mm. English. She was English. She was very English, though she'd been out in India for so many years. I think she went out originally as a nurse and then got involved in education. She also, yes, this, this reminds me of a little story that she told us once. I mentioned she saw that Indian husbands and wives were not in communication. So she got some of the husbands going on her you know, communication courses. And uh, she used to get them to report uh, you know, afterwards, uh, uh, how they'd been getting on. So apparently, one husband reported uh, that um, on waking up in the morning, he turned to his wife and smiled. You know, doing what Miss Miss, Miss Payne had taught him, and she was so shocked that she let out a shriek and jumped out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> so Miss Payne thought, "Well, this shows the state of you know, communication <laughs> between them." Oh <laughs> Bring back the memories, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So yes, this was Muriel Payne. Yeah. Yes, this this brings back a few memories. I, I believe she got an OBE for her educational work in India. I believe, as the memory just now comes faintly back to me, she was a, a tall, rather large woman, rather stout, but quite upstanding and with a very pleasant, amiable personality, but very direct and she could really communicate extremely well.